Yes. All hey right. Guys. Joining us now is Megan Day. Hey, how are you? I'm doing good. Thank you for inviting me on to like geek out a little bit about this weird history of May Day that nobody knows about or a few people do, but I didn't before I was writing about it. Well, I think it's actually really important um, because history tends to repeat itself. And, and I think that there are lessons that can be learned from this. So Megan's on to talk about uh, a piece that she just published in Jacobin. I highly recommend you guys check it out. It's titled The Nazis Stole May Day, but Socialists Took It Back. And Megan, tell us what this uh, history is all about. OK, so <clears throat> I was just poking around for looking at May Day art uh, in preparation for May Day. And I saw some things that I had never seen before. I saw like very classic socialist May Day imagery sort of covered in swastikas. And I was like, what's going on with that? So I did a little bit of research and um, ultimately ended up discovering that the Nazis actually waged a very intensive campaign to try to claim May Day for themselves and scrub it of all of its socialist and class struggle associations. And eventually to replace it with this kind of very fascist kind of creepy version of Nazi May Day. So that's that's what I wrote about here. And if you guys will indulge me, I'll tell you a little bit about how this happened because I do think it's really fascinating. Is that all right? Okay, so we're gonna, here we go. So the first things first, as we know today, we celebrate May Day with like red flags and raised fists and all of our traditional songs of solidarity like the Internationale. Um, that's been happening since the late 19th century, since the inception of the holiday, but that tradition has not gone unbroken. Um, in 1933, Hitler came to power. And shortly after Hitler came to power as the chancellor of Germany, um, there was the Reichstag fire, and then Hitler muscled through the Reichstag fire decree, which was meant to criminalize essentially all forms of left-wing opposition. It was it was passed specifically with socialists in mind, with the socialists who were members of the German SPD, the Social Democratic Party, and to a lesser extent, the Communist Party. Um, so immediately in 1933, they had just opened a brand new concentration camp called Dachau, and they started sending political prisoners there first. Um, and that included primarily socialists, primarily members of the SPD. Kale, if you have that photograph on hand of those SPD prisoners, this one really shocked me when I came across it. So these are socialists who had, many of whom had just been, you know, leaders of their SPD chapters or certainly very active members. And they're being forced to hold a sign in Dachau that says, I am a class conscious person slash an SPD leader. Um, so that started happening immediately in 1933. A few months after the Reichstag fire decree was passed and the imprisonments started, um, interestingly enough, there was a May Day celebration, right? Why is there a May Day celebration in a country where left-wing opposition has just been made illegal? It's because Hitler planned this May Day celebration himself. Uh, so he invited half a million people to come to Tempelhof Field in Berlin for this big May Day celebration where he spoke in front of these um, very elaborate, this is a very elaborate set. It was designed by his main architect. It was supposed to be very imposing. There were these large Nazi banners everywhere. And he invited um, not just the general public, but trade union leaders were flown in. Um, you know, the SPD's fortunes had just fallen dramatically. So um, so a lot of the trade unions didn't really know what to do. And some of them opportunistically allied with uh, Hitler's government. And Hitler actually needed, uh, he greeted them himself. And he said, look, you're going to see, this is a direct quote from Hitler, actually. He said, you will see how untrue and unjust is the statement that the revolution is directed against the German workers. He's trying to sort of reassure reassure these trade union leaders that actually he's for the workers. See, he's holding a May Day celebration. And actually a bunch of workers were there. They had been invited, um, invited is, is actually a euphemism. They had been compelled to attend by their employers and their employers marched at the head of columns with them. So this is very different from May Day's past where workers are showing up spontaneously on their own in the spirit of sort of resisting the tyranny of their bosses. Now they're actually marching behind their bosses who are of course answering to Hitler. So it's a new spirit of May Day, a, worse, a far worse spirit of May Day. And so Hitler takes the stage and he actually says, he lays out what his new vision of May Day is gonna be. So as you guys know, you know, May Day around the world has been celebrated as the International Workers Day, right? And he says, 
this is bad. May Day has always been an important day in German folk history. It's a spring folk festival and it's and um, and we're gonna return to that vision of May Day. We're still gonna honor workers. It's important to honor workers, but he has a new slogan that he rolls out for May Day and it's called honor the worker and respect the work. This has nothing to do with class conflict and nothing to do with class struggle. It's just kind of like paying lip service to the fact that some people work in society, right? Um, and he says, actually, he says, this is a quote, the day of new life and hopeful joy was transformed, passive voice, he means by evil socialists, was transformed into a day of quarrel and internal strife, a day of hate. The symbol of class conflict, of never ending strife and discord is now becoming once again, the symbol of the great unity and uprising of the nation. And he even says in this speech that it's necessary to teach each rank and class the significance of the other ranks and classes, i.e. the hierarchy stays, it's actually a natural hierarchy and we're gonna celebrate workers, but we're going to also you know, um, reify this arrangement um, and actually teach everybody the importance of having things like bosses and workers and so on. Um, Goebbels also takes the stage that day and he even puts a finer point on it. I'm gonna read a quote to you from Goebbels. He says, this is Hitler's minister of propaganda. He says, on a day when in former times we heard the rattle of machine guns and the hate inspired songs of the class struggle and the international, in this first year of Hitler's government, the German people is assembled in unanimous unswerving loyalty to the state, the race, the word that he uses, Volk there, and the German nation to which we all belong. So the new vision of May Day is essentially a day of class, German class unity ac across class lines, because hey, if you're German, you're part of the Volk, you belong to the Third Reich, let's all come together. Um, workers are good too, thumbs up to the workers, uh, but this is what we're doing from now on. So the trade union leaders, I'm sure, are just sitting there feeling incredibly nervous, right? Um, um, socialists are being shipped off to Dachau, and they they were sh they were given an assurance that they were going to be taken care of. But the content of these speeches is very alarming. Um, they probably were not alarmed enough because the next day, on May second, nineteen thirty three. Hitler's brown shirts march into the trade union offices all across the country. They occupy them. They arrest the trade union leaders. They confiscate the union funds. They ban unions in Germany and they replace unions with something called the German labor front. And I wanna show you this, Kale, if you have that G German labor front flag, this is kind of mind blowing. Do you see the appropriation of traditional working class workers movement imagery here? The industrial, um, gear, the wheel, it's encircling a swastika. So this is kind of the way that they're gonna proceed with May Day. They're basically just gonna appropriate socialist imagery and slap swastikas all over it, right? Um, this is not totally surprising when it comes to the Nazis. Of course, this is how the Nazis got their name to begin with. They're called the, what, what is it not? National Socialist German Workers Association is the full party, is the full name of, of the Nazi party. Um, so that was their, that they've been doing that for a long time. That's how they appeal to German workers um, who at that point were actually, they had, because of the SPD, the, the Social Democratic Party, and because of the very powerful unions were a big and important sector of you know, German politics. They have to be appealed to. So Hitler found out a way to appeal to them. So they were doing this with May Day at first and there, were, there was all of this May Day art that I came across. I don't know, Kale, if you wanna show some of it, that's like um, um, workers holding like, tools in one hand and a red flag in the other, which is very classic sort of May Day stuff, right? And here's one, yeah, of worker, a worker holding his tools and standing before factory silos. This to me looks like anything that you would see from the Soviet Union. Um, and it's just classic socialist imagery, but there are swastika flags everywhere. You can see in the top corner of this one, it does say the 1st of May. So this really is a May Day postcard that was issued by the Third Reich. Um, so that's what they did at first is they're sort of appropriating this socialist imagery. And then what they decide to do is is sort of phase it out, right? They're, they're first they appropriate and then they say, oh yeah, we got to show this one. This one's really insane. Thank you for showing that, Kale. That right there, um, first of all, very scary looking um, human head. I don't know why that's there, just to frighten people perhaps. But there's a hammer and a sickle on this commemorative coin that was issued in 1934, along with a swastika and a classic Nazi eagle. I it, uh, it's a really odd object. It's very ideologically confused. Um, but that's why that object 
exists, right? If you came across that in the wild, you would be very confused, but it makes sense in this context. So they start to transition away from worker anything. I mean, they're they're trying to do what they call integrating the German workers back into the quote national community. And so that means that they're gonna stress the very folky side of Mayday. Um, and that means lots of like maypoles and wreaths and garlands and arboreal imagery. But yeah, look at this. They're going to be topped with swastikas. This image scares the living shit out of me. I apologize to people who are listening to this on a podcast. Um, I really recommend that you go look at the article because some of these images are um, pretty jaw dropping. This is a maypole top, it's covered in sort of strange symbols, including a hammer and sickle. I don't know if you can see that underneath the swastika and then there's a swastika on top, but it's also sort of folky looking and it's, it's sort of like wreaths on top of a pole. It's supposed to be a sort of neo-pagan May Day thing. And speaking of the neo-pagan aspect, I think this is important. I mean, you know, first I wanna say that so it's not like socialists had never noticed that May Day falls on, you know, the traditional spring uh, holiday in Europe. And actually, um, you know, from the even from before, um, you know, what we consider socialism proper, back, going back to the French Revolution, um, the, you know, sort of wreaths and garlands and, and maypoles were used as symbols of left wing mass politics and resistance to tyranny. And certainly in the UK, especially, a lot of the May Day art that you saw from the UK in the late 19th and going into the 20th centuries focuses on maypoles and beautiful flowers and the spring imagery and things like that. So it's not like that's odd automatically kind of creepy and fascist or anything, but the way that the Nazis use it, it definitely was. So if you know anything about the Nazis use of like runes, for example, um, that they that was always to sort of signal to a pre-Christian pagan identity that basically the sort of the idea that Germans were rooted in this land since antiquity. Um, it's and in a similar sense, the maples and the wreaths and the garlands that were used during Nazi May Day were meant to evoke this kind of were meant to evoke ethnically pure Germans, personal, you know, sort of distinct connection to German history and German land. It was kind of a romantic ethno-nationalism. It was meant to bind together like mystical notions of race and nature, or in other words, blood and soil, right? Um, so the word they used for this is Volk, which means folk, but it comes to mean race, right? The folk are really the German race. So it's it's much creepier than like Walter Crane's beautiful version of Socialist May Day in the UK. Um, so what did workers think about all this? Mm, they weren't that interested in it. And we know this because they're actually internal reports from the Nazi party where they're concerned that the workers aren't really biting. Um, the workers show up to the celebrations, right? They're supposed to be workers days. They get a holiday off and they show up because they're basically because there's free food and drink and who wouldn't, you know, it's entertainment, it's something to do and it's free. There's big banquets. But in terms of who was like really excited to Heil Hitler and listen rapturously to these speeches that were being broadcast from Berlin every year on Nazi May Day and participate in all these folk celebrations like the crowning of the May Queen, who was always dressed in like a dirndl and had her like classic Heidi, like Germanic blonde braids or whatever. It's not really the working class of Germany. Um, they're just, they're kind of apolitical. They're kind of like, whatever, not really that excited about it, at least from what we can tell from Nazi reports um, where they're concerned about this problem. Um, so they were they were a hit, the May Day celebrations were a hit, but mostly with the petty bourgeois, um, and to use a non-Marxist termino terminology with those sort of lower lower middle classes, the lower and lower and middle middle classes and the petty bourgeois were basically the main constituency for these like folk holidays. Um, the Nazis were leaned on employers. They were like, you gotta get the workers to participate in these. So, so a lot of workers were showing up by compulsion. Um, and it lasted for maybe five, five years this way. And and eventually the participation in the, these creepy Nazi May Day uh, rallies, um, which were also, there was a lot of like martial displays, you know, military parades, lots of swastika bunting everywhere. Um, the So these these celebrations, the participation did start to dwindle as, as Germany neared war. I mean, it was clear for years that they were gearing up for a war, right? And and eventually the Nazi Nazis' internal reports start to say like, well, uh, people are finding the situation a little bit too grave for festivities anyway. 
but they still are working on integrating those German workers into the national community. And so they want to keep doing something for Workers' Day. And so the Nazis essentially say to the workers, like, or to the to the employers, like, look, you need to host, you need to give people a day off of work and like just provide them beer in the factory, right? It's like an employer's gift to the workers or whatever. So they start doing that. And apparently it's a very bleak situation. Like people are just kind of sitting around and drinking beer inside of their factories while their employers are like watching over them being like, are you enjoying this? Are you enjoying your Nazi May Day? So um, very unpleasant all around. And uh, the war starts and then eventually even those kind of get phased out. I think it's 1942 that because of the stress of war production, they actually cancel the May Day holiday. So the workers have to work on the holiday that was declared for them. So the whole thing is essentially a failed um, experiment. Um, but it was a very creepy and, and interesting uh, moment in May Day history nonetheless. Um, so where were socialists during all of this? I mean, mostly they were hiding or in concentration camps or dead. Um, and speaking of, you know, socialists being killed, you know, at, at a certain point, I, I in my research, I was I was finding something very interesting, which is that you know, socialists had originally in like 1933 and 1934, especially in Berlin, they had anonymously created pamphlets and posters to try to remind workers of the original Marxist origins of May Day and the fact that it's actually an international celebration of unity in class struggle. But, um, you know, it's getting traced back to them and they're getting rounded up and and also this, their underground networks are, are not staying underground for long. You know, the, the Nazi police are all over them. So they start holding informal gatherings with each other on May Day to sort of keep the, the flame alive, but they have to disguise them as coffee clutches or just like gatherings of friends. And they're afraid to sing the Internationale, actually, because they're afraid they'll be overheard and then they'll and then they'll be either killed or sent to concentration camps. So they just sing apolitical songs. And for years, that's that's essentially how it went on. Um, and it turns out that the only place that socialists were able to find to freely assemble in in the later years of the Third Reich was actually funerals for comrades who had been killed by the Nazis. So it was expected, of course, that a person's friends would show up at their funeral. So socialists would be able to gather together at the funerals of fallen comrades. And sometimes their eulogies would take the form of socialist speeches. And essentially these are the only socialist speeches being given in Germany during the Third Reich, are eulogies for socialists who've been killed by the Nazis. Um, but, you know, May Day may have been completely bastardized in Germany, but it's an international holiday. So it's being celebrated as an international workers day in lots of other countries. And that includes also on the periphery of Germany's expanded territory, right? And so for an example of this is in the Warsaw ghetto. In 1944, actually, um, they, they did celebrate May Day in the Warsaw Ghetto and they sang the Internationale and then they waged a campaign of bloody reprisal against Nazis. And to celebrate May Day, they murdered as many Nazi SS officers and soldiers as they possibly could. So the spirit of May Day was alive and well in other places, including in the far reaches or near-ish reaches of, of the Reich's empire. Um, 1945, April 30th, uh, Hitler kills himself. That means the next morning, which is May Day, 1945, the world wakes up, Hitler is dead, the Third Reich has fallen, and Nazi May Day, along with the Nazis themselves, is officially over. So this is an interesting history in part just because there are lots of reasons to celebrate on May Day, but I think that an additional one is, is the kind of poignancy of the fact that there was a major attempt to completely co-opt and erase the meaning of this holiday and our version won out. The fascist version did not win. The, the socialist version of May Day is the version that is, that is celebrated today. Um, and that's just extra cause for celebration on our part. So that's the reason why I decided that it would be worth a story worth telling. Thank you for letting me just like go on and do a Wikipedia entry. I appreciate that. No, nah, this is great. I mean, this was this was fascinating. I did not know the specific history. I mean, I, I it certainly fits um, with the general trend of Nazi Germany and that, you know, right wingers tend to like to think it's like a some sort of own to socialists be like, you well, you know, the Nazis, they called themselves socialists, um, right. you know, and like Benito Mussolini, he he did a he did Medicare for all. Um, and uh, and but, but, but that's really what it is, is that they the, in, a, in a in a society as class conscious as uh, as Germany was in in those decades. Um, in order to win over any 
not the majority of the working classes, but some of the working classes, they needed to adopt that kind of socialist rhetoric um, and that kind of socialist symbolism because um, it was, I don't know, it was a pure um, stylistic nod towards socialism, which was the dominant uh, the dominant political ideology of the working classes at the time. Um, so it, it certainly, it certainly makes, makes a lot of sense. It's kind of fascinating. I had, had no idea. Yeah. Yeah, that's I right. Mean, and I think, yeah, it's important that you, that we, we push back on that because that's such a common refrain. It's like, well, the Nazis were socialists. It literally says so in their name. Um, it's yeah. important that we understand the history that was intentionally done to win over uh, the wor the working classes. And um, there were actually some Nazis who mistakenly, uh, they had come from the socialist movement and they, they like actually Mussolini. believed. Like Mussolini. Yeah, Mussolini, yeah, for sure. Um, Oswald Mosley in, in the UK had been a Labour Party um, member, but in the in Germany as well, um, there were some Nazis who, at the very beginning, they had come sort of from the milieu of the SPD, um, and they actually believed there were their very, very, very small minority of socialists in Germany, but they believed that the Third Reich might be a transitional phase toward revolution. And, and Hitler would say things to them like, uh, yeah, sure. If that gets you on board, then yes, definitely. We are definitely doing that, right? And you know, it was in no time. I mean, in the first, uh, 1934, so it's one year after the Reich begins, um, they were murdered. I mean, that's what the Night of the Long Knives is. It's the purge of that wing of the Nazi party. They were just murdered and eliminated because Hitler was tired of hearing all the, you know, hearing all this stuff about how we're gonna do socialism. That was just, that was just a gambit to get a few people on board. I mean, I'm oversimplifying gravely, but not, but that's definitely true that it was just a crass appropriation of socialism to get enough people on board to consolidate power. All right, everyone go check out Megan's piece. Uh, I'll read you the title again. The Nazis stole May Day, but socialists took it back. And Megan, thank you so much for um, coming on and, and telling us a little bit about your yeah. piece and this incredible history. Yeah, it was a blast. Thanks guys and happy May Day.